tayong mga Kristiyano, talagang kailangan tayo may goodness, no? Sa Panginoon. Matagal mo, pag nakapa-hospital ka, pag tinanong ka, may pasir, may pera ka, ay dikli, hindi mo Jesus bayad na yan. Kung makita mo, sabihin mo lang doon sa hospital, o inalapas ka na, no, hindi problema pera sa mga Kristiyano. Amen? Sa mga anak na Lord. Amen? That's why kapag ang Panginoon, you know, sa lahat ng mga bagay na gagawa ni Lord sa atin, marami talaga tayong dapat na ipagpasalamat. Amen? At kapag si Lord naman ang, naman ang tumawag sa atin, dapat naman tayo ay hindi nag-aatubili na tumugon. Amen? Kaya lang ang problema ng iba, marami silang alibay. That's why today, we're going to learn no more excuses. Be who God wants you to be. Amen? Kapag yeah. tayo tinatawag ng Lord, marami tayong alibay eh. Marami tayong sinasabi, marami tayong mga kadahilanan. At saan tayo yung mga dahilan na yun ay hindi balik? Sabagat sa loob ng iyong mga ikanga ay mga tugon o reason sa iyong tugon sa paning Panginoon. Meron ka talagang ikanga um, hindi masabi na dahilan kung bakit hindi ka makatagal. Kung mong ba sa inyo ito? Huwag ngayon? Bukas na lang? Pwede? Later na lang, may ginagawa pa kasi. Bakit ako? Di ko alam. Yan. Wala akong aid dyan. O di kaya naman, lagi na lang ako. Ikaw naman na magtapo ng basura. Amen? O di kaya naman, sasabi ng iba, Basta rin ako pwede kasi di ako karapat dapat yan. Amen? O di kaya naman ang bagong sasabi, hindi ako pwedeng maglingkot kasi ang buhay ko ay hindi kalugod-lugod. Amen? Ang iba ay ayaw nang magpatuloy sa church at maglingkot sa Panginoon. Kasi bakit wala ka noong Sunday? Pastor, but so so searching muna ako. Yan. Di ba ang ganun dahilan, no? So, we have a lot of excuses. At ang tao, hindi na uubusan ng dahilan. Hindi na uubusan ng reason. At tanda natin, let us remember that excuses is one of Satan's most powerful and, ano, greatest weapons. No? Kapag ang tao ay nag excuse yun yung pinatutuwa ni Satan sa iyo. When God knows that you are capable, Satan will try and do all his best that you will declare you are unable. Amen? What else? Every time you offer an excuse to the Lord, Satan gets his glory. Kapag may sinabi sa'yo, leader mo, pag may tumawag sa'yo, may pinagagawa sa'yo, tapos, for some reason, nagdahilan ka lang, sabi ni Satan, five points. <laughs> Who got the points? Not the Lord. Who got the points? Not even you. Who got the points? The enemy got the points. Because of you. Remember, we are not aware of that. Amen? We are unconscious of that. But the more we make excuses to cover up our unwillingness, to cover up our uh, in a not cooperative or being not cooperative or being not obedient, Satan will always get the glory. Amen. And also, Satan shall for joy each and every time because the devil's goal to use his power upon us is in the area of excuse making. Amen. Maraming mga likot na maraming excuses sa buhay. Jonas, you know, did not go to Ninive. He booked his ticket going to Tarsus while his destination should be in Ninive. Why? Excuses. Because alam niya that in Ninive, it's not good to be there because there are people who will be, you know, there are people who are dangerous at ang mga tao doon ay tiyak na dadaanan niya ang lugar papuntang Ninive ay magiging mitya ng kanyang buhay. That's why, instead of going to Ninive, he went to Tarsus. 
Ang evangelism central, nagpunta ka sa team sa Atsoy. Excuses. Why? Numbers 23 verse 19. Basta, ha? God, that he should repent, hath he said, and shall he not do it, or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good. Can you read it in Tagalog? At Dennis? Ang kay Tulupano. Tagalog, yeah, Tagalog. Tagalog version. Okay. Sige, Marie. Ang number ay nasa sunod, nasa, nasa Old Testament. Okay. Ha? Ah, ah, sige, laksan mo, laksan mo. Wow. Ang sabi niyan, ang Diyos ay hindi sinungaling katulad ng tao. Kapag sinangako, kanya pinutupad. Amen. Hindi kaya tayo. No? Pinibigyan tayo ng example ng Lord kung paano tayo tutupad. Okay, let's bow our heads and let's pray. Father in heaven, in the name of our Son, Jesus Christ, and to the power of the Holy Spirit, Lord, we thank you, God, for this wonderful morning, Lord God, that you're going, Lord God, to once again touch your people, communicate with us, Lord God, talk to us, Lord God, in a very gentle way, God. Let your people know that you are God. Let your people know that you have a purpose why we exist, Lord God, on this earth. And in our existence, Lord God, it is your ultimate goal, Lord God, that we will learn in every day's uh, experience that we have in this life. At Panginoon, maraming salamat to Diyos sa buhay po ng bawat isa. Nalangin ko, God, na bawat isa o Diyos ay iyo pong abutin, iyo pong ipakausapin, iyo pong Panginoon, o Lord God, to challenge, Lord God, sa araw na ito. So sa lahat ng bagay, O God, maging sa iyo, ipinagagawa sa amin, maging totoo kami sa iyo. At ikit sa lahat, magtiwala kami sa iyo. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, Amin po, Lord God, ikinukumit sa iyo ang aming atensyon, ang aming focus, ang aming puso, ang aming pandinig. At kaya mo, Panginoon, sa oras nito, marinig namin na yung tinig, maramdaman namin na yung puso. At ikit sa lahat, maunawaan po namin, Lord God, ang iyong layunin sa buhay namin. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Alright. Reasons why we should listen to God's call. Na tayo ay tinawag nito. Inuwala ba kayo? That the reason that God is waking you up every morning is because you have a purpose to fulfill on this life. Amen. Meron siyang layo ni sa buhay mo. Meron siyang purpose sa buhay mo. Kaya pasalamat ka, kapag ka dumarating ang umaga, kapag mumulat ka ng mata, nakakagising ka ng maayos. Why? Sabagat, ibig sabihin, mayroon ka pang assignment na gagawin para sa Panginoon. Now, what are the reasons why we should listen to God's call? Iba hindi makinig sa Diyos, hindi sumusunod sa Diyos dahil sa pag-aatubili, dahil sa sobrang pag-aanilangan na kapag sila'y sumunod, maraming mga bagay sa buhay nila na maapektuhan. Una, dapat nating malaman that God's Word is pure. Ang salita ng Diyos ay puro at dalisay. Ibig sabihin, wala itong bahit ng pagkukunwari. Wala itong bahit ng kasinungalingan. That's why in Psalms 1, oh, 12 verse 6, basa ang mga salita ng Panginoon ay mga, ay mga dalisay ng salita na gaya ng pilak na sinubok sa hulo sa lupa na makapitong dinalisay. Wow! That's the Word of God. The Word of God is being purified seven times. Ibig sabihin, it's uh, a figurative name. Ibig sabihin, wala kang makikitang anumang mga bahit ng kasinungalingan o ng anumang mga pag-aalilangan o anumang bagay na pwede nang nating pag-atubilian, no? Because the Word of God is pure. Second, ang salita ng Diyos ay totoo. So, awit 119 verse 160, basa. At ang bawat isa na inyong matutuwit ng katulan ay magpakailanman. Ang kabuhan ng salita ay ano? Katotohanan. The whole word or the whole uh, truth of God ay puno-puno ng katotohanan. Ibig sabihin, yung salita ng Diyos ay, again, there's no uh, lie in it. Okay? Puno ng katotohanan, puno ng matuwid na kautulan, magpakailanman. Number three, 
When God speaks His word, He will perform it. Kapag sinabi ng Diyos ang kanyang salita, o kapag nagsalita ang Diyos, lagi niya itong kuto pa rin. Ezekiel 12 verse 25. Basta. Amen. For I am the Lord, ako ang Panginoon, I will speak, and the word that I shall speak shall come to pass. Walang bagay na sinabi ang Diyos na hindi nangyari. Even from the beginning, when God created the earth, created everything, ay lahat ito ay naganap. Walang bagay na sinabi ang Diyos na hindi niya tinupad. It shall be no more prolong, or in your days, or rebellious house, sabi ni Sikel, Will I say the word and will perform it, say the Lord God. Amen? Now, ito ay napakalinaw at simple. Sabi dito, kapag sinabi o inutos ng Diyos, ito'y mangyayari. May sinabi ba siya na hindi niya ginawa? O nagsalita na ba siya na hindi natupan? Everything that God declares, everything that God utters, it happens. Kaya nakatuwa yung sinabi ni Sister Marie na biniayara na ng Diyos siya. Amen. Amen. Because God promises na sa lahat ng mga bagay na ating pinagdadaanan, kasangga natin siya. Amen. Amen. Katulong natin siya. He will provide. We do not know how He's going to do it, but surely God is going to fulfill His promises sa atin. Amen. That's why, iyan ang ating Diyos. Makapangyarihan, tapat, dakila, ang Diyos ay hindi sinungaling. Ang Diyos ay gumagawa. Amen? Now, Exodus chapter 3 verse 1 to 10. Tapunta sa main text. Basa? Habang nagpapaskol si Moses, ang kawan ng ginanyang si Jethro, na pari sa Gideon, itinawin niya ang kawan sa gawin kandura ng disyerto at nakarating siya sa Sinai, ang bundok ng Diyos. Doon ang Anghel Yahweh ay nagpakita sa kanya na parang apoy na nagmumula sa gitna ng isang mababong punong kahoy, kinakita ni Moises na nagliliyap ang puno, ngunit hindi nasusunod. Then, kaya't sinabi sa kanyang sarili, napapagtataka naman ito, itinakong mabuti kung bakit hindi yun natutupok, gayong nagliliyap. Nang lalapit na si Moises, tinawag siya ni Yahweh, buwag siya nagliliyap ng punong kahoy. Moises, Moises, ano po yung sagot niya? Sinabi ng Diyos, huwag ka namapit, Pagkali mo ang isang dalyas, sabagat manang ng lugar ang kinatatayo mo. Ako ang Diyos na sinamba ng iyong mga ninuno, ang Diyos ng Abraham, ni Isaac at ni Hato. Tinakpa ni Moses ang kanyang muka, sabagat natatakot siyang tumingin sa Diyos. Sinabi sa kanya ni Yahweh, nakita kong labis na pinahirapan ng mga inusyo ang aking bayan. Alam ko ang hirap ng kanilang pinigis at narinig ko ang kanilang pagdain. Kaya tumaba ako upang sila iligtas, ilabas sa inyo, at yatid sa lupang mahinam, malawak, mayaman, at sagana sa lahat ng bagay. Ito'y ang lupain ng mga kananeyo, iteyo, amoreyo, reyeseyo, ibita, at ibuseyo. Narinig ko ang mga pagdain ng aking bayan, at nakikita ko ang mga pinginagawa sa kanila ng mga ayusyo. Kaya pagpupuntahin kita sa paon upang ilabas mo sa inyo. Okay. Now, to give you a background of who Moses is, alam natin si Moses ay isang Hebreo na bata pa lang siya, sangkol pa lang siya, ay pinaampo na siya. Kung baga, dahil sa banta sa kanyang buhay, sa buhay ng mga, pabata, ng mga bata na mula labindan ng taon, uh, bababa, ay ipinapapatay ng paraon dahil sa banta na ang populasyon ng mga aliping uh, Hebreo ay lumalago o lumalaki no? sa Egypt. So, para bagang halos ma-outnumber sila kung kaya, hindi, kung kaya kailangan gumawa sila ng paraan para sugsugkuin. Karoon sila ng population control. At ang the best population control na kanila naisip, pagpapatay ng mga isisilang mula edad 12 pababa. At isa doon si Moises. No? Kung kaya nga para maligtas si Moises, ang ginawa ng nanay niya, nilagay siya sa basket, ipinaanod sa ilo, nagkataon naman na ang anak ng pero 
ay nandoon sa may ilog, nakita niya yung basket, kinuha yun, at nakita niya si Moises doon, ang batang si Moises, inuwi sa palasyo, inalagaan, pinalaki, at nung siya ay, uh, you know, pinapag-aral siya sa Christi, Christidius, na paaralan sa Egypt, sa mga mausay na guro ng Egypt, na kung saan, pati ang kanyang uh, mentalidad ay uh, ugaling, you know, ang, ang kanyang kultura, sistema, ay sistema ng Egyptyo na kanyang kinagisnan. Pero alam natin, pag ang dugo niya talaga ay hudyo-hudyo talaga eh, no? At nakita rin natin, sabi doon, na nakarating kay Moises ang isang uh, impormasyon na siya ay hindi talaga likas na Egyptyo at siya ay talagang uh, Hebreo. Kung kaya nga ito bagay nito ay pinagmulay-bulay ni Moises sa kanyang sarili ang guys, ang araw nasaksihan niya ang isang Hebreo na sinasaktan ng isang Egyptyo. At hindi nakatay si Moises, kanya itong sinakluluhan at sa hindi sinasadyang pagkakataon, napatay niya yung Egyptyo na nagbunsod o siyang naging dahilan upang si Moises ay tumakas mula sa Egypt at nagtago sa Midian sa ilang. Doon sa ilang doon para siya mabuhay, siya ay naging pastol ng mga tupa. 40 years, he spent 40 years in the Midian Desert until God, you know, called him. Napunta siya doon sa bundok ng Sinai. pag ng bundok ng Sinai, doon ay kung saan ay meron doon isang puno na nagliliyab. Daka siya, bakit ito ay hindi nasusunog? Kung kaya nga nilapitan niya hanggang sa narinig niya isang tinig, ang tinig ni Yahweh, ang tinig ng Diyos na sinasabihan sa si Moises na o ano ang nangyayari sa kanyang mga guwabaya, mga Israelita, ang kanilang daing, ang kanilang pagyak, dahil sa kanilang pagkalipin. At sabi ng Diyos, sila'y gusto ko nang palayain, kaya isusugo kita. Look at that. For 40 years, no, si Moises ay nasa ilang. At wala siyang talagang kaulayo doon, kundi ang mga tupa. And then here comes God, no? na sinasabi sa kanya, babalik ka sa Egyptyo para ikaw ang aking gamitin upang ilikas ang aking bayan. Look at that, 600,000 people, Israelites people, na slave sa Egypt, ang nakasalanay, na inilalagay ng Diyos sa kanyang balik. At kung kaya nga, maaaring isang bagay ito na sinasabi ni Moses, di ko kakayakin yun. Una, sabi ni Moses. Ano sabi ni Moses? Moses has received his call from God to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt. However, he does not accept this call with enthusiasm or even gracious. Hindi siya natuwa na tinatawag siya ng Diyos. Parang ikaw din, hindi ka natuwa na ikaw ay tinatawag ng Diyos upang gawin yung assignment na pinagagawa sa Diyos. You are not happy, but sometimes, kumbaga napipilitan ka lang. Amen? Katulad ni Moises, in other words, bantulot siya at hindi masaya sa panawagan ito. Amen? May mga tao na kahit na hindi ka masaya sa panawagan mo, when God calls you to do a thing, you know, sometimes darating ka sa punto ng buhay mo, susunod ka lang eh. Kasi bakit? Tinawag ka. Pag tinawag ka, tinawag ka. And your calling, tandaan mo, is not transferable, not rejectable, and not, you know, uh, erasable. Hindi yan mamubura, hindi makawala. Ang panawagan mo ay panawagan kahit ano pa ang mga kadahilanan mo. Sometimes, we have a lot of excuses in order not to do the things that God wants us to do, lalo na pag-ministry. Alam mo, ang oras mo ay hindi mo masusulo. Amen? You have to wake up early. You have to attend the intercession. You have to attend the Zoom class, the, the group uh, prayer, etc., etc. Sometimes you are obliged to contribute money. Kasi pag naglingkot ka, kasama ang bulsa. Pag naglingkot ka, kasama ang panahon, kasama ang puso, hindi pwedeng maglilingkot ka, attendance ka lang. Amen? Hindi pwedeng magbubutas ka lang ng upuan. Ito yung ayaw ni Moises. Kaya nga nung sabihan siya ni Moises tungkol sa dakilang panawagan niyon, he's not happy. Sino sa inyo ang hindi happy sa iyong ministry. Taas nga mga <laughs> Taas nga mga hindi happy na leader. That you've been a leader but you are not happy. You are in the light group but you are not happy. You are not happy because you don't like to do and you don't want to do what you are doing now for the Lord. 
Why? Una sa pagkat, ano? Una sa pagkat, hindi sinasabi mo lagi sa sarili mo, hindi ka handa. Sinasabi mo sa sarili mo na you have to sacrifice many things, yeah? Ang ibig sabihin, kapag hindi mo sasakripisyon ng mga bagay, even yung mga minamahal ng bagay, na hawak-hawak mo hanggang sa ngayon, bibitawan mo yan. Amen? Now, there are five excuses of Moses. Tingnan natin ang iba't ibang mga kadahilanan ni Moses why, God, why Moses refused, you know, God or hindi siya masaya because God has a plan, God has a purpose for His plan. Una, ang kanya excuse number one is no, no ability to do the task. Hindi na niya kanyang sarili. Ay, sino ako? Sabi niya. Sabi na Exodus chapter 3 verse 11. Basa. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go to unto Pharaoh and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Sabi ni Moses, Sino ako? Amen? Bakit? Sino ako? Bakit? Para pumunta kay Pharaoh. Alam ni Moses ang risk. Una, isa pagka, may kaso siya. He has an outstanding case. Nakapatay siya. And then, kaya siya tumakas para maiwasan at mataguan niya yung persecution laban sa kanya. And yet, narito ang Diyos, the creator of heaven and earth, telling him face to face, you have to go back to Egypt because I have a task for you to do. Sabi ni Moses, ah. <laughs> And then, who am I? Una, yun ang umisan ang ating sagot sa panawagan sa atin. Pag sinabing, oh, magturo ka. Ha? Ako? Who am I? <laughs> Ako? Di ba, joke only lang? <laughs> because when God wants you to do a task, no, it's not an issue of who you are. It is not an issue of your skills. It is not an issue of your experience. It is an issue of the purpose and the calling and the plan of God, not just for you, but for the people who are going to wait for you or are going to be benefited because of your positive response to the Lord. Look at Jonah. Jonah, okay, refused to go to Nineveh kasi ayaw niyang ng hardship, ayaw niya ng, ano, ayaw na ng risk, ayaw niya ng kung ano nang maranasan niya doon. At una, tinignan ni Jonah, yung mga tao doon, mga pagans, unbelievers. That's why Jonah doesn't want to go there. Now, Jonah diverted his direction Instead of going to Nineveh, he booked his ticket going to Tarsus. But you know, when you try to evade and escape that divine calling in your life, you cannot escape that calling because God is going to chase you wherever you go. Pupunta ka na Canada? I tell you. <laughs> God is gonna chase you. Kahit saan ka pumunta, ahabulin ka ng Diyos. At ibabalik ka sa lugar na dais ng Diyos na pagkana siya. What happened to Jonah? The storm, a great storm, you know, was suddenly broke, almost broke the, sh the ship kung saan si Jonah ay nakalulan. Amen? And then, people that is, who are at all the passengers in the ship were praying. Those people who doesn't know to pray, pray for the first time because they are in the middle of the sea and because they are afraid that they are going to be buried under the water. Except Jonah who was not praying because he knew that he is, that he was the reason why there was a storm. <laughs> Kaya na si Tanisya na ang kapitan. Lahat ng nananalangin, ikaw lang hindi. Kasi ako ho at dahil lang kayo ni Padilla. <laughs> so what did Captain Sabi ni Jonas, sinag sabi, 
eh, 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 ano, itapon nyo ko, hindi nga, sina ang itinapon sa dagat. And God, who is high tech, meron palang GPS na inilagay doon sa patin. Alam ni ng patin na itatapon si Jonah, kaya kagad-agad nagabang ng patin doon sa ilalim ng bato. At doon kinuha, no, kanya, uh, si, si, si Jonah ay nilulo ng patin. Yung patin ang nagdala kay Jonah doon sa lugar na ayaw niya ang putahan. Look at that. Amen? So you cannot evade the call of God. The same thing, when Moses said, Who am I? Bakit ako pa? Isang, kapag tinatawag, tinatawag tayo, ng Diyos nakatingin tayo agad sa ating kakayanan. Nakatingin agad tayo sa ating experience. Nakatingin tayo agad doon sa ating resources. Nakatingin tayo agad sa ating katabi. Mas mausay siya sa akin. Bakit ako? Who am I? Why am I? Why should I go to Pero? Anong meron ako na nakita na Diyos? Amen? Kaya kahit ano ang idahilan mo, kahit ano ang reason mo why you should go, I tell you, God is not going to accept whatever your alibi, whatever your excuses, because God's plan is His plan not only for you, but also for the people na kung saan gagamitin ka ng Diyos para sa kanila. Amen. Amen. Now, that's the reason. Next, ye Moses is counting himself as being unworthy. Sabi niya, who am I? And not equal to the task. Hindi ko kaya yan. 600,000 people ang magiging responsibilidad ko. Pag ako ay nagkamali, isang pitik lang nila ako, talsik na ako. Oh, hindi ko kaya yan. So he thinks God wants courage when God is actually asking that skill. He's not actually looking for your professional attainment. He did not even ask for your diploma. He did not even ask for your skills. Whether you know how to sing, whether you know how to dance, whether you know how to cook, whether you know how to tap on the basura. He just want to know are you willing? He just want to hear, are you okay? You can just say, Lord, I know nothing. I learn nothing. I have no credentials. But here I am, just like what Isaiah said, Sino ay papadala ko? Sabi ng Panginoon. Sabi ng Isaiah, Lord, here I am, send me. Yung iba, Sino ay papadala ko? Sabi, Lord, here I am, send her. <laughs> Sometimes, kaya tayo, dahil tayo magturo, kasi yan ito pag-ayaw natin. Siya na lang. Mas okay siya, mas magaling siya, mas marunong siya. Siya na lang. Hindi, ikaw nga eh. Ikaw nga eh. Iba yung assignment niya sa assignment mo. Kaya hindi mo pwedeng ipasa sa iba ang panawagan sa iyo. Amen. Amen. Now, kung ikaw si Moises, kampanti ka sa gitna ng disyerto ni Papa Stone Matupat, suddenly, nakakita ka ng isang punong kahoy na nagliliyab o nagkaapoy at hindi naman natutupo, at mula dito nakarinig ka ng isang tinig na sabi sa iyo na ikaw ay gagamitin ng Diyos para ilikas ng isang lipi ng napakaraming tao, which is 600,000, ano ang iisipin mo? Halimbawa, ikaw ay nasa ang natasan ni Carilla dito sa hongko na maglilikas ng 300,000 nearly 300,000 mga Pilipino ano ang gagawin mo? maaring ngayon pa lang hindi ka na magbe-breakfast hindi ka na maglalans hindi ka na magbe-dine kasi magpapasting ka para makita mo ang clear direction na gusto ng Diyos sa iyo Amen? O maaaring ngayon pa lang, magkukumahog ka ng magbook ng ticket para takasan ng panawagan mo at hindi ikaw ang makita upang mabigyan ng assignment niya. When we say no ability, God says in Exodus 3 verse 28, and God said, I will be with you. That's it. Do not serve the Lord 
Because you have a lot of things to boast of. You have a lot of things that you know that will bring you to a better, uh, you know, a servant of the Lord sabagat marami kang natutunan. Galing ka sa mga Bible school, galing ka sa mga prestigious na eskwelahan, at doon ka nag-aral ng theory. No. The disciples were unlearned. Peter was just a fisherman. Other disciples even did not even reach school. Only, you know, Matthew was a tax collector. The writer of the four Gospels, only Luke was a doctor. But not even one was skilled. And God is not looking for skillful people to serve Him and to be a vessel of His power. Hindi ka tinawag ng Diyos kasi magaling ka. Amen. Hindi ka tinawag ng Diyos kasi mahusay ka at wala na mapagpilian ang Diyos. Tinawag ka ng Diyos kasi may purpose siya sa buhay mo Amen. at ang purpose niya will always prevail as long as He wakes you up every morning. Habang inigising ka ng Lord yung umaga, pasalamatan mo siya sabagat bakit may assignment ka nagagawin para sa Kanya. Amen. When you wake up one morning and you don't wake up in the morning. Hindi ka na makising. And that is the point. You have to say goodbye. Bye-bye. Because your job is done. You're finished. Amen. So the Lord said, I will be with you. Tori. Kapag tinatawag ka ng Panginoon, huwag kang magdala. Tasamahan kita. Huwag kang magdala. If you don't have that ability, if you don't have that talent, if you don't have that skill, then I can put you, I can put every talent and ability in you. Just trust me. Amen? Amen? Amen! Bantayan niyo ito. Because after this, prangkahan tayo. Okay. Philippians 4.13, basa. I can do all things through Christ which strengthened me. Ibig sabihin, sabi ni Pablo, sulat niya sa mga taga-Pilipos, while he was in jail in Rome, sabi niya, magagawa ko, ang alin, lahat ng bagay. Hindi sinabi ni Pablo, magagawa ko ang ilang bagay. Magagawa ko ito lang bagay na ito. Kundi sinabi niya, magagawa ko ang lahat ng bagay sa pamagitan ni Kristo na nagpapalakas sa akin. Amen? That's why you have no reason. Because it is not you who will accomplish. It is God who is in you who will help you to accomplish things that you are, that you think, impossible to accomplish. John chapter 6, verse 5 to 6. Characteristics that are admirable about God is that He knows what He will do. Sabi na John 6, 5 to 6, basa. When coming toward Him, He said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test Him, for He already had in mind that He was going to do. Akala ni Peter, o ni Philip, si Lord, naubusan ng wisdom. Akala ni Philip, si Lord ay nangangapa sa dilip. And actually, when God asks you something, He just want to hear your reasoning. He just want to hear the level of your faith. He just want to hear how strong your faith is. How do you trust Him? The same thing when Philip asks na sabihin ng Panginoon, sinabihan siya ng Panginoon, ang mga taong ito, hindi kumakain. Saan tayo makakabili ng tinabay? Upang sila yung pakainin, nasa gitna sila ang disyerto, malayo sa McDonald's, ang Jollibee hindi pa nagbubukas hanggang ngayon. Saan sila kakain? Diyan ang nang sabi. Hindi ba bukas? Then, he asked this, sabi ito, only to test him. Nang sabi, because for he already had in my of what to do. Ibig sabihin, alam naman ni Lord, sometimes, tatanong ka ni Lord para ikaw mag-isip. Tatanong ka ni Lord para ikaw in your deep thinking of the solution tungkol sa problema mo, babalik at babalik ka rin 
doon sa may wrong solution sa problema mo. Amen. Amen? Because there are things in life na kahit anong gawin mo, hindi at wala at imposible yung masolusyonan mo, maliban na kung ang Diyos ay sasama sa iyo. Kaya ano ang pinangako ng Diyos kay Moses, don't worry, I will be with you. Don't worry, I will do it for you. All I need is a vessel. God can use angels. God can use thousands and millions of angels for to become a vessel of the task and the work and even to preach the gospel, the great commission. But he did not use it. He did not, you know, he did not make the angels or use the angels to propagate the gospel. He used and he wants to use you and me. Why? Kung kaya nga tayo ang pinamuhunanan niya na kanyang dugo, tayo ang kanyang tinupos, kung kaya nga tayo ang kanyang nilikha, he created everything through his word by God saying, let there be light and there was light, let there be firmament and there was firmament. But when he, it comes to creating men, the Lord stooped down to earth. He used his hand, take that uh, dust from earth, kanya itong nilika, ito, kanya itong pinulmahan, kanya itong hinugisan, nilagyan ng mata, nilagyan ng ilong, ng tenga, ng lahat ng parte ng katawan. At hinihan ng kanyang espiritu. At ang sabi doon, ang kanyang hinihan ng kanyang espiritu ay tinawag ng kaluluwang ng buhay. And from that time on, sabi ni David, God, you know, God put men always in His mind. Kaya sabi ni David, Who am I that you are always mindful of me? That's why because of all the creation, God made men to be close to His heart. That's why God wants to use you. Gusto kong gamitin ng Panginoon. Hindi siya namatay sa aso. Hindi siya namatay sa pusa. Namatay siya sa iyo. Para ikaw, ang kanyang gamitin, sa panahon nito. Amen? Now, and Philip answered, 220 words is not enough for them to eat. And verse 8, Andrew comes forth saying that there is a lad, there is a lad here with five loaves and two pieces. And he's replied, but what are they among so many? Again, si Lord, ano siya eh? Uh, hindi mo pwedeng higitan pagdating sa mathematics. <laughs> Ay, matuos eh. Sabi ni Philip, meron lang tayong limang tinapahay at dalawang peraso ng isla. Alam ni Lord Chile, masyado tayong matuos. Amen? Masyado tayong mabilang. Pinibilang natin, Lord, ito na naibigay ko sa iyo eh. Ito na naibigay ko sa iyo eh. Masyado tayong matuos. Ano kaya kung dumating kang araw? Sigurad naman ko sa iyo. Oh, ang iyong paghinga ay MWF lang. <laughs> Kasi I only provide you air during Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. During Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, you have to close your nose. Because the air will not be available because you already consumed so much gallons of air. That's why you stop breathing. You know, you teach me, Lord. What are you going to do? Pag ikaw ang kinukulit. Amen? That's why Philip said, we got only five loaves and two pieces. Hey Lord, the number doesn't matter. Amen. Hindi importante kay Lord ang bilang. Ang importante kay Lord ay faith. Amen. Where is your faith? Lord, how can I serve you? I have no this. I have no this. Wala pa akong pilo ng aking buhay. At sometimes, pag binigyan ka ng pilo, Oh Lord, si pilo ang hadla, kaya hindi kita mapaglinturan. Kaya si Lord, sumasakit ang ulo sa atin. Pinurblema mo si pilo, nung bigyan ka si pilo, si, si pilo pa lang, kaya hindi ka mapaglinturan. Kaya darating ano, alisin niya si pilo. Sa buhay mo, para makapaglinturan ko sa kanya. Amen? So, what are we going to do? Again, It's not the number. It is your faith that matters. Amen? You, the disciples, were physically moved by a great burden about to feed the 5,000 people. Ang sabi na, aalis ba kami para bumili ng halagang 220 worth of bread? Kailangan ba namin umalis? As if, 
you know, uh, they do not recognize or they do not know exactly who is this Jesus na kasama nila. 5,000 people are waiting to be fed. They've got only what? Five loaves and two pieces of bread. And 200 Hong Kong dollars. <laughs> Against 5,000. Sabi na, Patasya ba ito? That is a question of, you know, a question of being doubtful, no faith, a question of expressing that they do not really know God, but Jesus, indeed, no, ano ka naman niya? Tinuhan niya ang tinapay, pinalagay niyo sa basket, tumingala sa ama. Sabi nga ni Stel Rus kanina, bayag na yan in the name of Jesus. Ganun ang ginawa ni Jesus. Lord, I know that you are a very generous God. And now, as he prayed, kontente yung basket na pupuno, yung isla dumadami, and as they distribute it to every follower na nanodoon, ay hindi na uubusan ang mga basket o bakon ng tinapay. May sumabra pa raw, nalabinda ng basket. Meaning to say, the God who called you, you know, by your name, is a God who is a great provider. Amen. Hindi ka susunod dahil ano, magkukuna ka, I tell you, God is the source of everything. Amen. He He is even the source of life. He is even the source of healing. He is even the source of your finances. He is the source. There is nothing that you can ask from God that He cannot give you. Amen. Lahat ang bagay ibibigyan ng Diyos. But you, ano ang balik mo? Pag tinawag ka, ang dami mong excuses. Pag nanghingi ka kay Lord, sometimes ang sabi mo, now na. Now na. Amen? Pag nangailangan ka ng finances, ang tingin mo kay Lord, ATM. Lord, I need money now. Pero kapag tinawag ka, ang tagal mo sumunod. Delay obedience is this obedience. Hindi nila nakuha ang ito sabihin ng Panginoon. Sinabi, bigyan ng mga tao ng mga kain. He gave to them. Sabi ka, hindi nila na-realize at hindi nila na-recognize kung sino talaga si Lord. So the real life lesson ito turo sa atin ng Panginoon, without me, you can do nothing. Ibig sabihin, kung wala ang Panginoon, wala kang magagawa. Kung wala kang Panginoon, kahit ang iyong pera sa bangko, mauubos yan, mawawala yan. Pero ang Panginoon, kapag sa Kanya ka nagbangko, hindi ka mauubos. Amen. God knows that we are powerless, but He wants, what He wants is for us to get what we have into His hands so that He can work and prove Himself. That lad who brought five Loaves and two fish. Nagkataon, na-prepared yung bata na yun, sasama siya, mag-a-outing. No? Narinig niya about Jesus. Alam niya, it will take a whole day. Yung iba, sobrang excitement, hindi nilang paganda. Kaya siya lang imita ng pakmas. And at that time, you know, nung tanong ng mga alagat, sino ko may dalang pagkain? Tumaas naman ang kamay ng bata. And remember, the name of that boy was not even mentioned in the Bible. But he did great things in the eyes of the Lord. When you serve God, there will be a time that will be serving an unthankful ministry. People will never thank you for what you have done. But God, who can see everything and your goodness of the heart that you always give to the people whom love by God, you will always be rewarded Amen. at the end of this life. Amen. Amen. Matthew 19, verse 26, Basa. Jesus has to them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Yes, but with God all things are possible.
possible. Sa Diyos, lahat ng bagay posible. Sa Diyos, lahat ng bagay mangyayari. Sa Diyos, lahat ng bagay may sagot. Sa bawat tanong na iyong tinatanong, si Lord laging may sagot. Hindi mo man marinig ang sagot ngayon. Darating ang araw, sasabihin mo, Now I know that in all things, God works together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to His purpose. Number two, karaniwan ay nakatingin tayo sa ating mga resources para malaman kung ang pinagagawa sa atin ay posible. Nakatingin ka sa iyong wallet? Nakatingin ka sa iyong bank account? Nakatingin ka sa iyong kontrata? Wow, will be expired ang amo ko, hindi ko na sabihan kung magkukulirin niyo pa ako o hindi. Nakatingin ka sa kasunitan ng iyong amo. Ang hindi mo alam, sinadya ni Lord na maging masungit ang iyong amo para may ilagay ka sa mas magandang amo. Si Karaya, chapter 4, verse 6, basa! Saying, this is the word of the Lord unto Zerubbabel, saying, not by might nor by power, but my spirit said the Lord of hosts. Huwag kang manangan sa anumang bagay material, kapirahan, karunungan na pwede mong pangawakan para gawin mo ang isang bagay sa Panginoon. But the Lord is saying, strongly and boldly, it's not by might, it's not by power, but my spirit. Ibig sabihin, but my spirit, sinasabi ng Panginoon, huwag kang manangan sa sarili mong lakas karunungan sabagat hindi ang lakas mo, hindi ang karunungan mo, hindi ang kapangyarihan mo, ang siyang gagawa, kundi ang kapangyarihan mo. Why? Hindi yun sasabihin ng Panginoon sa Sigaraya at hindi rin yun sasabihin ng Lord kay Moises kung si Moises ang gagawa ng lahat ng wala ang Panginoon. Why? Matatalo si Moises. Moises would be unable to perform and do the task that the Lord has given him if Moises had not depended on the Lord's power and wisdom. Amen? Amen. Excuse number two. No message. <laughs> well, Lord, hindi ko alam. Wala kang mong sinasabi, Lord. Exodus 3.13 What shall I say unto them, Lord? Ano sabi ko sa kanila? Na pagdating ko doon, ako si Moises, pastol doon sa media for 40 years, na parito ko dahil pinasasabi ng Panginoon. Ganun ba? Diyan sabi ni Yahweh. Exodus 3 verse 16, basa. The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. Sabi niya, ipunin mo ang mga sino? Matatanda na iglesia, elders ng Israel. Okay? Sabi mo sa kanilang, ang Diyos, na, ang, ang, ang Panginoon na inyong Diyos, your father, of your father, the God of Abraham, si Isaac at Jacob, na napakita sa akin, I have watched over you and have seen what has been to you in Egypt. Ibig sabihin, kausapin mo sila na narinig ko ang iyak nila, narinig ko ang pananangin nila, at narito ko, isinugo ako, isinusugo kita para ilikas sila. Amen. And then, and I have, basa, I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pesarites, the Hebusites, and the land flowing with milk and honey. May lugar. There's a destination na pagdadala sa akin. Ibig sabihin, binigyan na ni Lord si Moises na objective. Binigyan na ni Lord si Moises na itinerary. When you leave Egypt, this is your itinerary. I have prepared already a place for you to dwell forever. Amen. Amen. 18. The elders of Israel will listen to you, then you and the elders that go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey in the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord our God. So, we have to do this. Para doon nga sa kanilang goal, 
And then God tells Moses, you tell them that I am, that I am sent you. He gives his name to Moses for him to use. So God is saying, go before them and tell them that he who spake in the world was sent me, he who exists, he that is eternal, it is he that I have heard from, and they will follow you. Okay? Ibn Shabihin, before the very beginning, even before Moses went back to Egypt, binigyan na siya ni Lord ng kodigo. Scripted na nga eh. Ito nga ang sasabihin mo. Ito na lang ang sasabihin mo. Wala lapis wala ko wala. And sabi sa mga muli, and they will follow you. Amen? Ibig sabihin, when you speak, I'll put my power I'll put my anointing and people who will listen to thy word can never resist you. Amen. Then when we say no message, I mean 1 Corinthians 15 verse 3 to 4. Basta. First of all, that we supposedly receive how that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Meaning to say, we are to preach the death and the resurrection of Christ. Ibig sabihin, maging sa panahon nito, yun lang naman, uh, gano'n na kasimple ang gospel. When we go to Central, ang ating sinishare ay si Jesus. How to receive salvation? We preach that Christ died that Christ risen, that Christ will come again. Amen? And that is the gospel. And Mark 16, verse 15, and he said unto them, Go ye into the whole world and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen? Wala pa nga kayo sa whole world. Central pa lang kayo. Chunwa pa lang kayo. Part pa lang kayo. Ay paano na kung whole world? Central pa nga lang. Ang dami mo ng alibay. Amen. May part-time ako. Meron akong appointment kay Bumbay. <laughs> Marami kami excuses. Excuse number three, no authority. Exodus 4 verse 1. Basta. But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. Exodus 4 verse 2, And the Lord said unto him, What is that in thy hand? And he said, A rod. God turned the rod into a serpent before Moses' very eyes. Moses ran from it in fear that it may harm his life, but God tells him to take it by the tail, and the rat turned back to rat. Moses was afraid of the serpent, just as he was afraid of the call of God for his life. So, hindi siya nag When God says, I'll be with you, the power of God will be with him. He can perform miracles. He can perform signs and wonders just to prove to the people kung saan siya ay ipadadala ng Panginoon na siya nga ay sugo o ipinadala ng Diyos because the, of the power that is in him. Ibig sabihin, when God sent you, He will not send you empty-handed. Hindi ka padadala ni Lord yung wala lang. God is going to empower you. God is going to enable you. You cannot speak. God is going to put words in your mind. Actually, when Moses said, I do not know, I cannot speak. Then God said, I'll give you Aaron, your brother, to be your spokesman. Wala kang day lang kay Lord. Hindi ka sanay magsalita. Then I will give you someone to speak for you. But just obey and just do it. Amen? So ikaw kaya, kung tinawag ka ni Lord, how will you obey? Ang ilang sa atin, I want you to stand up to the Lord. Ito na yung tatapos. Let us call the music team. Church, I want you to stand up and remain in the presence of the Lord. This is what the Lord wants to hear from you. When God calls you to do a task, what is your reason? Ang ilan sa ating ilan, ito pang tahana. Kasi bakit nasa in time na tayo, nasa huling panahon na tayo, kung hindi natin gotohanin ang ating buhay pati nito ay aharap tayo sa Panginoon 
The reason why God calls you, so we got men's expectation set, that in this generation, you're coming in FOM and being here for years, months, is because God has a purpose in your life. You have said, you have heard, clearly you have heard, that no human reasoning no human understanding. No human impossibility that you will present to God one day. When God will ask you, why were you not able to do what I want you to do? Hindi mo pwedeng sabihin kay Lord yung mga excuses mo na meron ka sa ngayon. Because God said, did I say that I will be with you? Did I say that no matter how impossible it is for you, may problema ka sa schedule mo sa amo, may problema ka sa schedule mo sa trabaho, did you pray to God that God will touch the heart of employer, your employer, that one day that employer of yours will one day say to you, okay, you can get up early in the morning, go to church in the morning, do uh, the things that the church asks you to do. God knows the very intent of your heart. When your player said, you cannot go this day off, did you stop there? You just let it and so be it because your employer said it. Or did you, Lord, I know you are powerful than my employer. I know that my employer should be in subjection to your will. I want to serve you, Lord. But my problem is my employer's schedule. Did you ever ask God to touch the heart of your employer. Some of you, again, as I've said, you will, after this service, you will wait another six days to come again to the church. You will sit down. You will sing. You will rise or you will sit down when you are told. And after that, nothing. And that, you know, when you attend the worship service, hindi ka pa naglingkod noon. Akala mo, naglingkod ka na kapag ikaw ay present. Akala mo, natanggap na ni Lord yung attendance mo at nasihan na si Lord na present ka to you, the worship service, na ikaw ay nakaawit ng papuri sa Lord, hindi pa kapatid. The life of connection that God is aiming and waiting for you is the life of commitment to serve. Why you are here? The reason you are here is because God sent you here today. This morning you heard this message. This morning God, you know, has touched you with this message. And the Lord is calling mighty women of God. A mighty man of God. Who will stand up for him and serve Him during these last days. And God is calling you. When God calls you, are you the same as Moses who says, Who am I, Lord? Bakit ako pa? Wala akong alam dyan. Ang panahon ko mauubos ng dyan. Wala akong skills, wala akong talento. 
wala akong kakayanan dyan. Did God call His disciples at tinanong ba ng Lord ni Jesus ang kanyang mga alagad? Anong alam mo? Anong karanasan mo? Hindi. Ang tinanong ni Lord sa kanila, Are you willing to follow me? That's why you are pieces of men. When you are called pieces of men, then you are a follower of Christ. Not just only to the church, not just only to attend the service, but also to serve the Lord in whatever calling that God has given you. Again, only the call. Matatapos na naman ang service mamaya. Uuwi ka o pumunta ka sa gusto mong puntahan. Anim na araw na muli ang iyong hintayin. Babalik ka muli dito sa church na ito. Makikinig ka na muli ng mesahe. Mabibless ka na naman. Kakausapin ka na naman ni Lord. Aabutin ka na naman ni Lord. Ang kanyang salita. And then what else? What happened? Again, the same routine, the same thing. Anapin ng Panginoon na tinawag ng Diyos. God calls you for a reason. And that reason is to serve. As we sing the song, I want you to talk to God. Ano ang binagagawa sa iyo ng Panginoon? Bakit ka nagkakabili? Bakit ka nagdadalong isip? 